In the last video, we talked about how we can assess uh, for parametric assumptions for a paired samples t-test. Whereas that's in order to demonstrate that a something like a paired samples t-test is appropriate to use. Next, we're going to think about how we can informatively visualize that. So we're going to work on how we can use SPSS to create a bar chart to demonstrate two conditions from the same participants. So we're going to work from the same data set. So we have the baseline proportion gaze to the singer and the test proportion gaze to the singer. So if we go through to graphs, and normally we could go through chart builder and it would provide us with different options. We can drag different um, chart types and select the variables, but there's one problem. When we have multiple conditions in a paired samples design, um, it won't let us add multiple columns to the same axis. So what we need to go to is legacy dialogues and bar. And we want a simple bar chart just because we only have one independent variable in this example. And by default, it will tell you that there's this, the data in the chart represents summaries for groups of cases. And this is where you would have a between subjects independent variable and a dependent variable. Here, we have a within subjects independent variable. So in SPSS, we have the conditions spread across different columns. So what we want is to combine those columns to show the data in one bar chart. So if we click summaries of separate variables and define, it will open the box to define the simple bar chart. So you will find your list of variables on the left and we want the variables we want to visualize in the bars represent box. So if we go for our first variable, which is the baseline proportion, and then the test proportion, by default, it sets it to the mean, which is what we would typically use to visualize this kind of data. If you did want to change that, you could go into change statistic and demonstrate uh, and visualize a different um, descriptive statistic. So we could use a median, we can use a mode, we can use the sum of the values, but for the time being, we just want the mean. And then the next thing we want to do is to add some error bars. So if we click options, by default, this will be uh, selected to off, but what we want to do is show a estimate of, um, of precision around our means. So if we click display error bars, and by default it will be the 95% confidence interval. So if we then click continue, we have everything that we need on this page. So if we click OK, we'll get the bar chart in our SPSS output. So what we can see here is we have both of our conditions, so the baseline proportion to gaze and the test proportion to gaze. And then on the y-axis, we have our dependent variable. But at the moment, this isn't very professional. Um, we have the, the y-axis just saying mean. It doesn't tell us what the mean represents. The x-axis has the original variable name. So this is handy for inserting these variables into SPSS. But it's not very helpful to, for us to see. It has the underscores, so we can change this. The y-axis scale ends at 0.6. It also goes to around seven um, decimal places, which looks messy. And we also have the grid lines in the background that we don't want as well, because it's distracting. So if we want to change this in order to use it in the report, we need to double click on it. And we'll open the chart editor. So this allows us to edit all the different properties by clicking on them. So the first thing we can look at is changing the y-axis label. If you click on it once, it will highlight. If you click on it again, it will allow you to edit it. So rather than the mean, we have a mean proportion gaze to singer. And if we click enter, that will save that. If we click on the x-axis labels, we can choose each one. So for this, we can just call it baseline. For the second condition, we can call it test. We don't need an extra 
title saying what the error bars represent, we can add this into the title of the whole figure. So we can just delete that and move off it. The next thing we want to do is change the grid lines. So if you click the, one of the grid lines in the background, it will highlight all of them. So we need to double click on that and make sure it doesn't re highlight the, hot, the exterior of the, bar, of the bar chart. We just want the grid line. So if we double click on that. And what we, what we can do here is if we really wanted, we could change what the grid lines looked like, but we would just want to get rid of them. So we can either make it white or we can turn it transparent. So this is the white box with a red line through it. If we click apply, we can see that the grid lines have disappeared. And the final thing we want to change is the Y axis tick marks. So if we click on here and double click to open the properties box, there are a couple of things you want to change. So the first thing, it goes from zero to 0 0.6. It cuts off some of the top values. So really the scale of our test could go from zero to one. So if we click on scale, SPSS will automatically set these values. So it knows that the minimum value in the data set is zero and the maximum value is 0 0.66. So this will set it to 0 0.7 by default and SPSS will try and help you by setting um, the sort of optimal values for what it represents. But sometimes it can cut off some values that you might want to see. So what, one way you can be quite misleading with data visualization is by emphasizing the difference between two conditions by making the y-axis very small or having a very small range. So what we can do here is turn these off auto. So the minimum value is where it starts, so we want to keep that as zero, but the maximum value we want is one. And then the major increment is the number that it goes up in. So if we set it to one, it wouldn't have any. We want them to, we want to show what values we want it to go up in. So because it goes from zero to one, we can set this to 0 0.2. So each of the tick marks will stay like this, where it goes from zero to 0.2 to 0.4, so on and the origin is where we have our starting point. So we can keep that to the auto if we apply this. We can see in the background that we now have the y-axis going from zero up to one in increments of 0.2. But there's one last thing to change. At the moment, we still have lots of decimal places, which we don't need. It looks a little bit untidy. So if we scroll further along in the properties, we need the one that says number format. So at the moment it's set to seven decimal places, but really we just need two. So if we change that to two, it will demonstrate at the top what it will look like and we can apply this. Now we can see it looks a bit tidier. So if we close this, we can see that the bar chart is a little bit more visually appealing. So it's clear to see the difference between the conditions. We have a good understanding of what our y-axis represents. So now that we're happy with that, we can go out of this. So if we click X, it will close the chart editor. And it will then update in the output. So once this is finished processing, it's like this. And if you wanted to insert this into your report, what you can do is go from file to export. And this is a way of saving your SPSS output. But rather than save everything, what we can do is just save the graphics. So this just means the actual plots that, you have, that you've created in your output. So if we can change this to different things, if we change it to HTML, it will show in a web browser all the SPSS output. We don't really want that. At, the, at this point in time, we just want none and make sure it says graphics only we can change the graphics type. So if we change it to PNG, it keeps the, it's better for showing um, the different properties of pictures. It keeps its, um, it keeps its sort of clarity as you change the size. And all you would then need to do is 
tell SPSS where you'd like it saving. So if we go to browse, um, I won't demonstrate that here, but all you'd need to do is go to browse, find the folder that you want, where you want to save it on your computer, and make sure you edit this name at the end. So whatever you want to save your figure as, you can change it to something like, baseline test gaze proportion, and that will save it as that figure title. If you then click OK, it will export that picture, the plot you've made as a picture, which you could then insert into your report.